Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Launched in the 1880s by the first baron, the Empin Industrial Empire spread from Belgium and France to span more than a dozen countries. Watteau, the latest baron, fashioned himself as the master of the universe. But these were the years marked by a rash of high-profile kidnappings around the globe. And Watteau's rise caught the eye of Alain Caillol, a small-time French gangster who had grown up in a wealthy family before embracing a life of crime. Let's find out what happened in The Last Baron by Tom Sancton. Let's welcome my guest, Ashley Martin. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you for having me, Gail. It's always good to have you. Yeah, it's great to be back. Another exciting story and one that really affected us. I mean, we knew about the family. I'm not, I didn't know about it living in Elkhart, Indiana, but looking back at what happened to this family, it was happening by the, the time I was growing up. And I thought, <laughs> what a character, what a character of a family. Uh, there's a lot going on. So let's start first by describing the founder of this family, the grandpa who who uh, really just came up like out of the ground. I mean, he he was a very simple person, wasn't he? He was, but he found himself in some very fortunate, you know, circumstances that he could um, get in some of these uh, adventures early, right? Yes, he did, and he did well, didn't he? <laughs> he did very well. Very and he well. was conservative. He saved his money, and he built up quite a treasure chest. Yes, and, yes. And it was very extensive, even by the time just with the grandfather. Yes, and Watto took care of that treasure chest pretty carefully, and then he kind of went off from the deep end. We'll talk about that a little <laughs> later. But you're, let's talk about what we're going to make, and why don't you start on yours? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make a Belgian endive salad with uh, fresh apples and goat cheese. Who doesn't love goat cheese, right? Oh, I love it. I love it. Right. Yeah. You can use a lot of different lettuce. I mean, you could, you're you using the, um, oh, what is this? Called? The romaine lettuce. Romaine? Unfortunately, yeah. endives were not in season at the moment when I right. needed them. But yes, you're right. It can be used with a lot of different lettuces. And uh, yes, the endive, it's true. We think we can just go and get this and get that, but it's its not always available. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this one, this one kidnapper. Well, he came from a wealthy family and he was rather bored by working in the in the uh, furniture business. I think it was he was the one. That right, he was furniture. running his father's furniture yeah. business and, and a life of crime at the same time. Yes, <laughs> and, and he said it's much more interesting doing crime. It, it gets you going and it's exciting. And and he had a good business with this uh, this furniture business, but he wanted the excitement. Did he get the excitement in this one, too? Um, well, and that's kind of interesting because they both, you know, worked. The kidnapper and the kidnappy both worked for their family business. And one found it, you know, invigorating and wanted to do it. And the other was a little bored by well, it. Bored by it. <laughs> yes, I guess it just depends on who you're surrounded by. But during Watto's time, he, re well, he really had a, a, a life that was divided into categories, didn't he? Yes, it yeah. definitely seemed that way. Well, yes, take the family to the south of France in, in the summer and then go skiing at Megev in the winter. He had a section, he, apartments for his, his mistresses. He had his gambling. Gambling? Yes. He, it was a very adventurous life. I mean, the gambling and mistresses, yeah. even though he was married and, and had a family. And yeah. um, he got married quite young, actually, 19, 19 and 20. 19, yeah. 19, yeah. Exotic. He liked exotic women. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, he was married three times. The horrible thing is this, this kidnapping that happened. He was just 
having his driver pick him up to take him to the office. Right. And a scooter came around the front of the car, and they had to stop. And, of course, when you stop, that's when all these other fun friends come and showed up. And showed him, yeah, and they blindfolded him, took him out in the country. He never knew where he was. And, and they demanded 80, was it 80 million? 80 million francs. francs. Yeah. And to show how serious they were about this, what little touch did they do? Oh, uh, they gave him a nice potion of some wine and some sedatives. And uh, they then unfortunately cut off his uh, pinky finger. Yes. Right, right above uh, the knuckle to prove that they were serious. Oh. Uh, and they sent it to mm -hmm. his family in formaldehyde. And um, so his family knew it was his because he had an unfortunate habit of biting his nails and so uh, the nails were very short, so they knew it, well, it was actually his finger. And here he is in a tent. Oh my goodness, this is not his expectation. I mean, he had this sumptuous life with all these homes and he's given a bucket, he's given a kind of leaky a mattress to sleep on and it was cold and it was And he was just, chained right by the neck? Yes, to the wall. Yeah. This is not the life of a baron, but he managed it, so he goes to his family, and do they say, oh, yes, here's money, here's money, we'll help you out? No, they are basically like, we don't have that much money, and um, they go to the Enpon company to see what they can, you know, help, and they come up with uh, 30 million francs, but it's a loan from the bank. The, um, they're not willing to right. not get it back in the end, and but the kidnappers say, no, that's not enough. And, of course, they want more, and the family is talking about it. He even contacts the mistresses and this sort of thing. And uh, then the mistress finds out about other mistresses. Uh, and anyway, that first part is just harrowing. Now, my first part here is I have cooked some uh, chuck roast cubes in a, actually in beer. And I've added uh, some bay leaf and I have had onions in here, and some flour, and some uh, brown sugar, and I'm going to add some more thyme, and then I'll add some mustard, a little bit of mustard here. Uh, it says use the Belgian kind that has the grains in it, uh, and that's what I would have had, but I didn't have. So anyway, we're using some French mustard. Uh, it's pretty close. Well, a lot it? of the story takes place in France, too. It does, so, it does. Because that's where Watto lives most of the time. And he, he has a fantastic house. He had a terrible habit of um, gambling away. They, they gambled millions. They, they? He gambled a lot of money. And that was one of the things, you know, during his kidnapping that really came out, how much he, he was gambling. I don't think his family even really knew how much. Well, and it really was an addiction. I, I have to say, what I'm going to do is put this on the burner to heat it up again. Then I'm going to add uh, some parsley. I've added some thyme and I've added the mustard. And we will let it cook a little bit because it needed about two hours uh, before we started. And I didn't want to be here for two hours watching <laughs> beef cook. I mean, we would have had a good time, but uh, I, it just didn't seem right. We would have opened some red wine in that time, oh, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> so are you going to arrange this? Yes. Is that your so plan? So I'm going to put uh, the lettuce in here, and then I'm making a dressing with lemon juice, um, extra virgin olive oil, and red wine vinegar. And then I'm going to add some uh, minced shallots and uh, goat cheese and walnuts and make it all look pretty in the bowl. It will be lovely and this will be heating and then you've got one other little thing, not little. I we have to right. make Belgian waffles oh, we for are, dessert. We are. Yeah, yeah. So listen, we'll take a little break and in the meantime, we want you to take a look at our menu today and we'll be right back. And we're back. We're in Ashley's kitchen making a Belgian meal. I'm doing a carbonade flamande. And tell me what you're doing here. And I'm making an endive, a Belgian endive salad with goat cheese and apples. 
Uh, so we're just going to finish up the, yes. the dressing here. Always got to add some shallots for taste, oh, that's right? Good. You know, and, and they actually are Ooh, better. It smells good. Can you smell it? I can, yeah. yeah. Well, this takes a couple of hours, so I got up early to start it because I... I just yes, thought, you you were getting up early to start yes, yours today, yes, weren't you? Yes, I was. And so we've got halfway through the book and the idea of all these gangsters uh, are involved in what's going on. And they move our man around, our Wado, the uh, last baron of the family. Uh, and he's missing all of his gambling evenings with his buddies. Right. And, and he, he, he gambles, just, he just gambles like a fool twice a week. And he never invites the, the uh, players to his home. And uh, because he doesn't want to mix all the people he knows. He didn't ha doesn't want to have one party where everybody's together. That is too much information to get out there. So he wants some people to know a little bit, somebody else to know a little bit about him. And that is his style. And so um, let's talk a little bit about his American side of his family. Well, yeah, his mom was from Ohio, <laughs> not far from where we are. And, he, and they kind of made fun of her accent. Yes, they spoke. brought it up multiple times. Yeah. I figured they had to sound like us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so true. And I thought, Ohio accent versus an Indiana accent. Is it the same or not? But she, she, uh, her, his father, excuse me, met her in a club. She was a striptease artist. Yeah. And he fell madly in love with her. And uh, and she turns out to be not so nice a person, a mother, or he, at least he doesn't, his, her son Watto doesn't think she's very nice. Well, yeah, and he said she was not very affectionate. And um, in the book, it had said that she made a comment that, you th that she thought if she doted on him or showed him too much affection too young, that he would than be gay oh. that, and it, it was like oh that's not exactly correct that's but, not exactly right but that's her explanation anyway for why she was kind of a distant she mother. was very distant and she had a good time spending money and traveling yeah. around and he had two sisters Watto did and uh, never got along with his mother she really was a piece of work. I think she was nasty to the kids. She was just interested in her life. And so he yeah. does blame his, his gambling debt and his um, insecurity caused by, guess what? The mother. Yes. <laughs> the mother. Who well, she also played a, you know, a big role in, in the kidnapping and not you know, paying the ransom. Uh, yeah. She didn't think that was the right thing to do, and that, I think, deeply hurt Wado. It did, because, you know, he had told his family, whatever happens, if I ever am kidnapped, don't pay the ransom. And, and then he's in this tent, and he's thinking, mm -hmm. mm, maybe they should pay. Right, he changes his tune. He yeah. wants to be free. Well, he's scared. He really is. Uh, well, in any case... How does this whole thing end? How does it blow up? How does he, he he's moved to another area and uh, they rescue him. The police come in and, and rescue him. But this man has lost about 40 pounds in 64 days. He's thin, he's resentful, he's thinking about his life and his family and he really can't hold it together. It's hard, isn't it? It is. He has a lot of um, trauma from the ordeal, the kidnapping, and, um, you know, right after he's released, he, he feels sympathy and uh, more allegiance with his kidnappers than with the police. Yes, it's that syndrome he picked up like yes. Patty Hearst did. Stockholm I, syndrome, yes. I like being with these people. They talk to me and they're rather nice in spite of the fact they cut my finger off. Right, <laughs> except for that, yes. And, yes, it was a Well, syndrome. and his family wasn't paying the ransom, so he thought they had left him, right? Yes. That he was on his own. Um, so yeah, he was feeling more sympathetic towards them, you know, right away. And the police, you know, their treatment of Wado, uh, right after they kind of suspect that he might've been a part of it. So they treat him like a criminal yeah. right after, which doesn't help his relationship with and the police. his family does too, in a way. It mm -hmm. must be your fault this happened. Hey, how are we doing with this Belgian waffle? Bit? Yeah, we got to work on that. The salad is done. It's we beautiful. I love it. Look at that melted butter here and we're just going to need about a half a cup of milk 
to add in here. Hmm. So you're making your your waffle mix. It's not a mix. Yes, it is a mix. It is a mix. We have to use a little bit of a mix. Um, but the the neat thing about these waffles is they have big sugar clumps that um, you can still taste even after it's cooked. So it's very sugary and the kids do like it. You can imagine. It's the <laughs> fantastic Belgian waffle mix. Yes. And here's a, a Belgian man and in his see beret. The, the chunks of sugar in there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So, what do you think the real difference is in Belgian waffle and a regular one? Do you think there's a big difference? I don't know. I think it's the chunks of sugar. That's my guess. And it sounds pretty good to me. Chunks of sugar, right? Yes, chunks of sugar, right. Well, you know, uh, there is a. Uh, they do catch the kidnappers. Yes, they do. Well, most of them, not yeah. all of them. A couple of them escape and they don't know whatever happened to them, but they they do have a, their day in court, more than a day. And, yes. uh, and Wado, while, Wado is also appearing in court. And uh, it- Right, he's got to testify, right? He has to testify. And there is this whole business too. I, I found funny how the writer talks about the French uh, judge and the French uh, lawyers that support him. They're so intellectual and so cultured. I mean, that's so French to bring that out. You <laughs> right. know, they're so intellectual. So the French always like to have a little, a little bit of a, a discussion about that. You know, we're we're, we're cultured. We are. Definitely. Well, and who representing who? I remember that was a big part of the book too. Yes. And yes. Um, it was a lot of detail, wasn't it? It was. And there was a lot of drama, and, and uh, the crime came out, and the fact that uh, that uh, this fellow I talked about, he, he always liked passing for him as a movie star. And so, how did this affect the whole family in the end? In the end, what happened to this family? Well, unfortunately, um, you know, Wado, when he came back and didn't get this welcome reception, he didn't, you know, feel like his family understood what happened to him or right. tried to help him. And so that part really fractured, you know, his relationships with his, with his wife, with his children, and then with his mother. You know, he went away for a period of time uh, to try to, you know, work through some things, I'm sure. And his mother came to him and basically said, you should leave the business. And he was pretty offended by yes, that. Yes, he was. They had people who were waiting in line to take over his, his position at the company. And, uh, but the mother, in some ways, there was one comment she made like, well, he kind of deserved, you know, she inferred that he got his comeuppance, that he was a nasty child, he was hard to take, manage, but you know, I, I, never, I never liked her. Uh, so how did this dynasty actually crumble? What was the last straw? Well, like you said, there were multiple people that wanted his job, right? Mm -hmm. they, they wanted to run the Empire Schneider Group, right? Yes. It was a big, you know, conglomerate and, um, so he came back and did run it for a little bit, but then realized that's not really what he wanted to do anymore. Um, and so they related it to like the Queen of England, right? He wanted to like govern, but not actually like implement, right? Yes, and just to appear at things and appear at, at events. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then he, he divorces his second wife and he meets a woman from the Caribbean. And it actually seems to have worked for him. We don't know. It doesn't go into depth too much. But uh, they were happy. And they're in this chateau that keeps popping up. It's almost like a character in this In this, They do story. talk about it a lot, yes. And I don't know. I think now it's pretty crumbly. If not, it's been bought by Russians and turned into a meeting place. And, and, and um, I think Japanese owners bought it too and turned it into a golf course, right? Because there was a lot of land. Yeah. There was a lot of land there. So, um, 
But yeah, he, you know, uh, then he, you know, appoints this person that he thinks is going to be like the prime minister to him being the king or queen of England. And uh, that person really, you know, kind of stabbed him in the back. Um, yes. With the previous predecessor, he had resigned, but he had said, I will pay you so you can have a nice retirement. And he thought the company on Pine Schneider Group should pay that. Well, it wasn't on letterhead, so the new president wouldn't pay it. So the Baron had to pay it himself. And after that, he um, didn't want to deal with the company anymore. Very and, dissolution to get me away from this yes. company. I'm going to, while you're doing, well, let's do a yes. sample one here. Let's do one. And I'm going to get waffle my... waffle maker going now. Get my uh, carbonade. And I know there's a word carbonaro, but, um, and I'm going to put in some chopped Italian parsley. Ooh, that sounds and, good. And you know, I, it didn't say to serve it on anything, just serve it and have wine. Well, Ooh, that's fine. I like that. That was pretty nice instruction. So we'll let that just sort of sit there. And now watch this. I think this is fun. And you've already used it, so you did a test. Yes, we That's have right. tested it. You gotta test it, right? <laughs> yes. So that'll take a couple minutes in there to get cooking. And does that go off with a ding and all these noises too when it's done? No, no, you just gotta keep checking it. <laughs> keep checking it. I would say add another ding to the kitchen. We've got, in mine, you've got dings coming from this and that. And sometimes now I have church bells on my phone and it's just, you know, a lot of, <laughs> lot of noise. But um, the, there's a lot of kind of stereotypes in the in the story, but you know what? Stereotypes do present a picture of a country and people, and I think they had a very unhappy ending to their life. It was never a close family, uh, but um, I'd like to wait and see about this. Well, we can come back and see this when in yeah. a couple of minutes. Yes, it'll be done soon. It'll be done. Yes. So at this point in time, we'll take a little break. We invite you to come back. In the meantime, let's show you some pictures, more pictures from the book, and you can see about this conglomeration of interesting characters that made up this family. We'll be right back. Well, we're back here. We're having our wonderful Belgian meal with some red wine. Ashley, for you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And look at these beautiful Belgian waffles. Yes. I mean, they're just lovely. You can make a dessert with them, have them for breakfast. Uh, and we have a wonderful salad. And if Belgian uh, and I was, uh, would be in season, we'd have that. And in that pot, hidden away, is a carbonara flamone. It well, is, let's look at it. Sure. We got a, oh, look and at how beautiful that is. It, I think it would be good. Yes, I hope it's good. It should be. It's got a lot it of great smells ingredients. Smells wonderful. It smells great. Now, we talk about this book and our favorite parts. You have a favorite part. You have to talk. But let's do a sante before you start. Cheers. Cheers and sante. Sante. All right, tell us your favorite part. Well, one of the, I thought, most intriguing parts of the book was the kidnappers getting a shootout with police <laughs> right at the end. And they actually, um, unfortunately, you know, kill one of them and then one is captured. And that's really what leads to Wado's release um, because he's the main, you know, kidnapper. Yes. He was the one with the idea. So he calls and says, let him go so that no more lives are lost. Absolutely. It works out. We have a little bit of that, that uh, syndrome where we, we talked about it before, where Watto learns to even meet some of these kidnappers after the fact. Yes. But that's a, for another story. <laughs> so we have our, I'm going to taste these 
Belgian waffles. I can't wait. In the meantime, we're so glad you joined us. And Ashley, thank you for your ideas and for making such a nice Well, thank you for having me. This is always fun, It's Gail. fun, isn't it? Yes, yes, it really is. Thank you for joining us. And remember, good food, good friends, good mysteries make for a very good life. We'll see you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.